<laughs> hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician here. Uh, sorry, I had a frog in my throat. Uh, but today I've just got a quick reason, quick tip on how to get more performance out of your CPU. Uh, so you can start handling those bigger brand new VST plugins that I'm sure we're going to start throwing in and uh, putting all over our recordings. So this is pretty simple here. Um, all you have to do, well, it's, there's a lot of different things you can do actually, which is uh, not simple, but you know, there's um, each individual one is rather simple. So let's go to the edit button and go to preferences, and let's start with the general tab. So um, hiding all cables here will save some processing power. Turning off cable animation will also save some processing power. Uh, the CPU limit, um, you want to probably set it to like 90, 95%, but I've found that when you don't put a limit on it, sometimes it actually is more likely to crash. You're going to have to experiment with that on your own computer. Um, sometimes it just takes up too much power, I've found, and then like nothing gets prioritized quite right like maybe Windows itself doesn't have enough power. Um, you definitely want to click multi-core audio rendering um, and self-contained samples from loading with disk doesn't have anything to do with um, performance but you definitely want to do that so you don't lose your samples. Uh, and then this is the big one here. Um, you kind of have to uh, distinguish between the recording phase of your productions and the mixing phase when you start putting all the plugins in. So when you're recording, you want the latency to be really low. Uh, that means that if you hit a note on a keyboard or on a guitar, the sound you hear back is responds very quickly. Part of this is going to have to do with the capabilities of your audio card, your audio interface, uh, but part of it also just has to do with the settings you have it on. So when you're recording it live, you're going to want to try and do the fastest latency or the shortest latency. Right now, it's five seconds in and five millis or five milliseconds and five milliseconds. Um, you know that can change. You can go longer than five milliseconds. Five milliseconds you can barely hear. Um, but after it gets too high, it's kind of hard to play live. But then once you start mixing, it becomes sort of important to. Uh, increase the sample rate because that allows your computer and your hard drive to focus more on processing the effects and less on focusing on the recording input and outputs. And really you shouldn't notice a difference in latency if you're not recording. Uh, so there should be no real visible difference to you as the mixer if the latency is 50 milliseconds or if it's 5 milliseconds as long as you're not actively recording. Um, and so I just kick it up to the highest amount so that I don't have to think about it when I'm mixing. Um, and here's a couple other quick tips. Um, but if this has been helpful, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel um, because I try and bring all sorts of information to you guys, not only about how to use Reason, but also just how to make songs, how to license your music, how to get professional quality recordings. So. Here's two tips that are just going to be helpful across the board for any type of audio production. Uh, whatever DAW you're using, whatever. First, you want to get a second hard drive um, and a solid state one if possible. And you want to have that hard drive be where you save your recordings to. So let's say your C drive is the drive that Reason is running on or, you know, Pro Tools or whatever your DAW is, you want your D drive uh, or your C drive or your F drive or your G drive or whatever letter that's going to be uh, to be a solid state drive and that's where you want to record your folders or your recordings uh, which will free up a lot of pressure on your hard drive to read and write and record. Uh, that will give you huge boosts in performance. And the second thing is that um, if you're running plugins live or um, let's say especially synths, if you can bounce them from synths into audio and then do 
your effects processing on them, you're going to find that you'll free up a lot of space. And what you do is you actually delete the underlying synths so your computer doesn't have to render the synthesis. It just has to render, you know, the tape saturation or the reverb or whatever. Um, and some people don't like to give up this control, but I like to think of it in two ways. First of all, what you do is you save a new version of your document before you do this, right? So you'll always have the version where you've got the MIDI data and the raw synth information you like. And if you don't love the sound, you can always rebounce it, tweak it, whatever. But most of the great recordings that you love were not made in a world of like infinite choices, right? It's craft work or, you know, um, Steely Dan, the Beatles, Pink Floyd, whoever it is, they didn't go back and like constantly like tweak what they had recorded. They had one synthesizer sound. They thought it was the best synth sound they could get. They recorded it and then they stuck with it. Or if they really didn't like it, they went and tweaked the sounds and re-recorded it again. So you're really not losing anything. Um, this is how music has been made for a long time, forever basically, until the past few years. Uh, so hopefully these tips will help you get the most out of your uh, software, out of your recording sessions, especially as you move into the brave new world of tons of VST plugins. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.